Gaboom Viper versus the Puff Adder. Who's the biggest? Who's the baddest? Coming up. Hey y'all, Willie from Venom Central here. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. Have a safe new year. Don't drink and drive. Have fun at your parties. Get home safe. Before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit the V logo. And please share. And come on back and check out our other videos. We got a lot of cool stuff. But today is about Bidets, the African heavyweights. We're going to do a side by side comparison of the Gaboon Viper versus the Puff Adder. And you guys tell me what you think is the most dangerous snake in Africa when it comes to these two species. Now, mind you, they're both big, heavy body vipers, true, true vipers, just cool as ice cream, very cool snakes, but very dangerous snakes. So we're going to hit on a lot of differences between these two species. I'm going to show you guys some big ones, but we're going to talk about size comparison, fang comparison, everything that entails both of these species, we're going to hit on it. And we're also going to do a feeding so you guys can compare speed. Who's the fastest? So hang in there. We got some cool stuff coming at you. Okay, guys, we're going to do the comparison thing today. We're going to talk about gaboons. We're going to talk about puff adders. But first, I'm going to pull out a gaboon viper, and we're going to show you a pretty good size one. Now, this animal is only three years old, and it's still just a sub-adult. It's nowhere near an adult. It's got quite a ways to go. But gaboons are pretty prolific, and their range across Africa, it's they cover some range. Not quite as much as the puff adder. The puff adder is really widespread, but we're going to put a couple little range maps in there just to show you just where the puff adders come from and where the gaboon vipers come from. And what's interesting is in some of the ranges, they actually overlap a little bit in different areas of their ranges. And there's been some imports sprung into the country that are hybrid. They actually hybridize in nature. And it's also been done in captivity. Now, I've never done it, but I actually did do the gaboon and rhino viper cross. I've had them done before, and actually we done it on accident. We didn't mean to do it. It was it was a fluke. But beautiful snake, they call them Gabinos. But I've seen some of the hybrids of the Puff Adder and the Boom Viper, and they're really cool looking. But it's a naturally occurring hybrid also. But the Gaboon, now for size, the Gaboon takes the Puff Adder for size. Now mind you, Gaboons can get large. Heavy body, very big. And we'll put a picture in there of some of our big monster gaboons, but puff adders can get big also. Now, puffs can get five foot and girthy too. It's not a smaller snake. I mean, depending on locale of puff adders, their sizes range. So it depends on where they're coming from. I know some puff adders from different parts of Africa get bigger than other ones, and their colors are really variable. But to stick with gaboons, now we're gonna pull a gaboon out. Now this is the West African variety. This is Bitis gabonica rhinoceros, the West African gaboon viper. And what's interesting is not all gaboon vipers have them big rostral scales, them two big nose scales. Now it's usually the West African variety that has the big, the big little, we call them horns, but they're actually just a rostral, they're a nose scale. And if you even can call it a nose scale, it's on the end of their nose. <laughs> And this is a three-year-old animal, and it by no means is a is an adult gaboon, okay? This gaboon is still just a youngster. It's still a very young gaboon. It's only three years old. Now, this happens to be a male of the species, and males and females become quite large. And it's still kind of an iffy area, because... I've got a female that's five and a half foot, and i got a male that's a little bit bigger. And some people believe that maybe the males get larger, but who's to say? I mean, it depends on each individual snake and how they're fed and, and how they're raised, I guess. But in the wild, now, these animals are ambush predators. They will spend a lot of time in the same spot, and they rely on this cryptic coloration to catch their prey. And also, they rely on this cryptic coloration 
so they don't get discovered and eaten themselves. So it's it's a defense mechanism, and it's also a hunting mechanism. They use it to hide from prey, and they use it to hide from predators. So kind of cool. But notice the head on this animal. They have got an extremely large head. And look at the size of the head on that rascal. Now the thing is, is now gaboons are known for the largest fangs. They're known to have up to two inch fangs. And I'm going to show you guys some fangs. We're going to do a fang comparison of the puff adder and the gaboon. And gaboons have monster fangs. They have, they have daggers. And gaboons are known for putting out the highest venom yield of venomous snakes. They actually put out a whole lot of hurt juice. They put out a big yield of venom when they when they inject it. And we believe that gaboons normally don't even inject a lot of their prey items, that they literally get killed just by being impaled by the fangs. But the venom does help break down a prey item and subdue it. And in gaboon fashion, they'll bite and hang on and Hold it up in the air, which we'll do a feeding and show you. But this snake is also known for being one of the fastest striking snakes. And it does have a lightning fast strike, but it's just a little bit under the clock when it comes to a puff adder. I think a puff adder is a little faster, but this is what this is about, guys. You tell me what you think. You tell me if you think the gaboon is faster or if the puff adder is faster. You tell me if you think the gaboon is more dangerous than the puff adder. You guys make the decision for yourself. I'm just going to give you the facts. And another really cool fact about the gaboon is they're a really prolific snake. And now, last year I had 52 babies born from one female. Um, I had another clutch. This was maybe seven or eight years ago. And I had 63 born. So they're prolific. They have a lot of babies. And I had baby gaboons born with no eyes. I mean, literally, no eyes. No orbital sockets, just scaled over. They looked like a little alien. It was really cool. And this animal fed, and it done well. And I gave it to somebody as a gift. They thought it was really cool, so I gave it away. But anyways, now size comparison. Gaboons get a little bigger than puffs. But puffs do reach enormous size also, depending on the locale they're from. Different locales are different sizes. But I'm going to let you guys judge. But look at the anatomy of this snake. And this snake is an ambush predator. This snake does not cause as many snake bites and as many deaths in Africa as the puff adder. The puff adder is a wider ranging snake, if you look at the range maps. And we're going to pop them range maps in there so you guys can see exactly how widespread the puff is compared to the gaboon. Now, he's a very docile snake. This snake is really chill. And that's not true to all of them. I've got puff adders. I've got gaboons. Some are laid back. Some are completely ballistic. This happens to be a really chill snake. This snake is less reluctant to bite you than not. I mean, he's, he'd rather just be left alone and just chill out. <laughs> now, that big, buffy appearance, that big, heavy body, don't let that fool you. This snake can move quite quickly when it needs to. And now, venom. The Gaboon Viper Venom. Now, it is a cytotoxic venom. It is a bad bite, and it does cause a lot of death. But the problem is... Where these guys are at, they're not really stocked up with antivenom in its own country. It's hard for them to get the antivenom for the snakes that reside in their own country. And it's not really available, so a lot of bites go untreated, so a lot of people suffer and die from the bite of a gaboon. But not as many as the puff adder. The puff adder is way more dangerous to me, I think, than the gaboon. The puff adder is more wide-ranged than the gaboon. The puff adder is a little bit more ill-tempered than the gaboon. So that's why they think that the puff adder is one of the most dangerous snakes in Africa. And then you've got the soft-scale vipers and things that are actually right up there with these guys. And I don't know a whole lot about soft-scale vipers, carpet vipers, but you can jump over to 
to, uh, I'll tell you who does, is a, a Viper Keeper channel. That guy knows a lot about Echis, a lot about soft scale vipers and and uh, carpet vipers and, 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 and that whole species of snake. He breeds them. He's, he's an expert on soft scale vipers. <laughs> but anyways, the Gaboon Viper. And you hear that huffing and puffing? And that's the signature sound of a gaboon. And now puff adders make that sound also. That's why they get that sound, that, uh, that name, the puff adder. But notice them big scales on his nose. Now, we really don't know for sure the purpose of them big rostral scales. A lot of people believe that it's water gets filtered through the scales so it can go into their mouth for drinking when it's raining. I mean, but who knows? I don't know for sure. So <laughs> I think it just makes it look cool. But anyways, we're going to put this big guy away. And we're going to pull out a puff at her and let you guys decide for yourself which one looks more menacing, which animal do you think is more dangerous. Okay, and now the puff at her. This is the biggest aritans. And... We're going to start out with the body of this snake. They're sort of built like a gaboon. They're short, heavy bodied, but for size, I think gaboons can get a little bigger, but there was a six foot puff adder recorded. And I had a puff adder years ago that was pushing six foot. It was a big one, but notice the head on this animal. Nowhere near the size of a gaboon viper head. And it doesn't have nowhere near the size of fangs that a gaboon holds. Even though they have a pretty pretty good sized fang, it's nothing like a gaboon fang. Now, puff adder venom is known to be the hottest venom of all the vipers in Africa. Now, it's highly, highly cytotoxic. Okay, and it's this snake is responsible for more deaths in Africa than any other viper, according to the study I just read. I just read a really interesting interesting article and I learned a lot from this article and now mind you this article it is it's it was written on on on, on cryptic coloration and chemical crypsis now I'm explaining you what that is now the cryptic coloration now the gaboons have a cryptic coloration now that's what they use to hide from predators and hide from prey so you, it, they literally disappear in front of your eyes in leaf litter and puff adders have it too not quite as much as a gaboon but in their surroundings they blend in very nicely but what's interesting is puff adders have a hidden secret okay they have literally a chemical crypsis which masks their smell they're learning how to cover up their smell puff adders remain in the same spot for months on end, and they don't hide as well as other snakes. Now, this study was done literally by, uh, it's a Professor Graham Alexander, um, what, what, uh, he was at the, the Wits University in South Africa, okay? And it was at the, uh, the Alexander Research Herb Laboratories. And they've been doing this study for like the past four or five years, and they're studying puff adders. And he radio tracked a bunch of them, and it's this professor and all of his students. And what they're doing is they're training meerkats and dogs to smell snakes. And they've done it with four or five different species of snakes, with different types of snakes, with cobras, with gaboons, with puffs. And what they found is that the meerkats, the dogs, they can't find the damn puff adders. They found that they literally have a chemical crypsis along with their cryptic coloration. How cool is that? I mean, and I believe what I read. I mean, these guys have the data. They have, I mean, this is from a research that's been going on for four or five years. So it's really interesting. And the, the article talks a lot about venom composition and, and puff adders in general. But it's really neat what they're doing with the meerkats and the dogs. And they've come up that puff adders have learned to mask their smell. So now they're training the meerkats, along with the dogs, to smell puff adder feces, puff adder shed skins, anything related to them, and they still can't find them. The only way they're finding them is visual 
and with the radio trackers. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's amazing stuff what they're doing. It's really a neat article. We're gonna put a a, a link to that article. Y'all need to read it. If you guys have puffs and, or anybody that's working with puff adders, it's just it's it's an awesome article. It's just it's got me fascinated. But now along with the hottest venom. Puff adders are really one of the most widespread of the vipers in Africa. Its range covers much more than a gaboon. So the numbers make it more dangerous. And more there are definitely more recorded deaths by the puff adder, the Bidisari tans, than a gaboon. Not as many people encounter a gaboon that they do encounter puff adders. These snakes inhabit everywhere. They inhabit a lot of populated areas, so bites are more prevalent in these populated areas. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to, oh, this is the female. She says, I'm going to be a good girl. I'm just going to chill right here. Now, the body size of this animal, this is an adult. And this animal can get bigger, and it will get bigger. This is a breeder. This animal is already reproduced. It's sexually mature, but sexual dimorphism we're not sure about them. And even the study states that they're not quite sure. But the biggest puff adder that they encountered in the wild was pushing six foot. But when it comes to weight, the gaboon beats them out on weight. The weight of a gaboon is almost double of what a puff adder is. Even though puff adders are heavy body, very stocky build, the gaboon's got to beat out with that. But when it comes to it, I think my personal opinion I think the puff adder is a more dangerous animal. And working with them in captivity, let me tell you, like this one's behaving, but they all have their own little personalities. Like this one is really chill, and I can work around it safely. I ain't got to really, really worry about this snake turning on me, even though I don't give it the opportunity to. Most I keep my snake hook in my hand and guide it around. But there's one in here, this male. The males are belligerent. Like I can't put him on a table. He's all over the place, and he'll strike at me, and he's a complete knucklehead. And the males are much more beautiful. Now, these are Namibian puff adders, and I've raised these from babies, and these guys are my breeders, and this female just got done with her breeding cycle. So that's another thing. Puffs, even in this article, it tells you breeding cycles. It tells you everything. It's just a great article that I just read, but, you know, these guys won't go through a brumation, like a lot of other snakes do, they go through an estivation. They kind of like to stay out of the, during the dry season when it gets their drought season there, that's when they kind of try to hold up and, and stay out of harm's way and until the rains come again, I guess. But anyways, the puff adder or the gaboon, which one do you think is more dangerous, faster? The puff adder, or, I'm sorry, the puff adder definitely has a hotter venom, even though gaboon, Gaboon venom is very, very toxic, is cytotoxic also, but the puff adder venom is a lot hotter. So, you guys make your own mind up what you think. <laughs> and, and check that article out. It's, it's amazing. Cryptic coloration, also with chemical crypsis, that makes this snake a little cooler in my eyes. He may not be as beautiful as a gaboon, but a snake that knows how to hide his smell... A snake that can hide visually and his scent, that's pretty wild, right? And have a hotter venom. And is more widespread. So, my thoughts are the puff adder wins. But you guys, leave it in the comments. Tell me what you think. We're going to put this big girl away. We've taken enough liberties with her. Okay, and we're going to just do a quick feeding of each of these species that we're doing a comparison on today and this is the gaboon viper and we're gonna let you guys judge just who you think's faster what snake do you think has a faster strike smell of it oh That was pretty fast, pretty quick, and in true Gaboon fashion, she's got it up in the air, and now notice she's 
struck and he's hanging on and that's something that kabooms do and puff adders do it also but it's kind of interesting because the study I've been reading that they say puff adders will strike and release which I've seen that happen a lot also they'll strike and release and sometimes they'll strike and hang on and the study I've been reading is that they're saying that the puff adders do it according to prey size and according to prey variation They'll strike and hang on to amphibians and reptilian prey items, but they'll strike and release larger mammal prey items, which is interesting because why, why risk injury, right? So, kind of interesting. Okay, and that little girl done a good job. So, we're going to move over to the puff adder next. Okay, and now we're going to do... The speed test on this puff adder. This is Bidisari Tans. And let's see if she strikes or she strikes and releases or strikes and hangs on. Let's see. Let's just see how fast this little girl is. Okay. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. And she's hanging on, which I've seen this snake do both, strike and release and strike and hang on. And this is kind of a smaller prey item for her. Now, we usually give her a rat that's much bigger, but we just fed her several days ago, so I didn't want to give her another too big of a meal. And she is clamping down. Look at her. <laughs> side to side. She's definitely envenomating that thing. I can see her her actual venom glands depressed. I mean, she's actually, she's giving it a, a big old yield of hurt juice. <laughs> okay, so you guys decide. Who do you think is faster, the gaboon or the puff adder? Now, I don't know. But you guys put a timer on it at home and see what you think is quicker. But... This video is all about you guys. You guys tell me what animal you think is more dangerous, what animal you think is faster, and we'll come up with some kind of conclusion. Okay, here we can see the comparison of Gaboon fangs compared to puff adder fangs. Now, you can see the gaboon fangs here on the right are massive. And now these are these are animals of similar size and a set from each. Now, literally, the gaboon fangs, they're they're an inch. They're they're pretty big and girthy. Notice how thick they are, notice the the actual curvature of them. And the puff adder fangs have a nice curvature too. I mean, designed for hanging on to prey, but notice the size. They are nowhere near compared to a gaboon fang. Now, the top set here, this set here, is from, is from a gaboon of around four and a half to five foot. And this is an equally sized puff adder. And there's a massive difference in fang. Now, this is the delivery system. This is what puts the hurt juice in <laughs> And then this set here is from, this is actually from another four footer, three and a half, four footer, and that's an equally sized puff adder. So the gaboon has got them beat out. The gaboon has a much larger fang and a better delivery system. But the puff adder definitely has a very, very hot venom. It's, it's actually hotter than the gaboon. It, it, it's, it's very cytotoxic and it's a much more potent venom. But the gaboon gives a higher yield. So you decide. Is it the hotter venom or more venom? Which does the most damage? But anyways, just a quick little comparison to show y'all. Okay, guys. I hope you liked this little versus episode. The puff adder versus the gaboon. But you guys give me your opinion. Leave it in the comment section. And... I was just made aware of that somebody started a little YouTube channel 
thing that was, it says, uh, please subscribe to Venom Central. <laughs> and I, I think that's awesome. If somebody's trying to help us, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Whoever did it, please leave it in the comments section. Let me know who you are. <laughs> I'd like to thank you. But anyways, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. And let me know what you guys think. Me, I think the Puff Adder's got him beat out. Even though I love them both, I think the Puff Adder is this uh, much meaner, more toxic, more deadly snake. But you gotta love the Gaboons. But anyways, you guys, please come back and check out Venom Central. Let's all have a happy and safe New Year. This is Willie checking out. Later.